House of Assembly met together on the 16th of February 1959, it was probably the most historic occasion in the history of Nigeria. For this was the day when the self-government bill was to be ratified. For al Haji, Sir Amadou Bello, Sodana of Sokotu and Premier of the region, it marked the culmination of years of planning and hoping and striving, of conferences in London and at home the solid preparation needed to ensure that northern Nigeria advanced in good order. His Excellency the Governor, Sir Gawin Bell, arrived at the House of Assembly to open the session. He and his predecessors had played a large part in steering the North towards the goal of self-government and the whole of Nigeria towards full Commonwealth status. His Excellency inspected the Guard of Honour mounted by the Queen's own Nigeria Regiment, he must have had in the forefront of his thoughts the great constitutional changes which have occurred since 1944, when Sir Arthur Richards, now Lord Milverton, said, the problem of Nigeria today is how to create a political system which is itself a present advance and contains the living possibility of further orderly advance. The solution has been found. This great and varied country, with its diverse people, by its own efforts and the help of well-wishers in the United Kingdom, has advanced in good order to the status of a self-governing territory. This meeting, the last major phase of the preparations for the Commonwealth status of the Federation of Nigeria, could be said to have been completed. The Council of Ministers, headed by the Sudana, received the title deeds of self-government. They held the future of their peoples in trust. That night, the night for celebration. The Premier was saluted in fireworks. No wonder there was rejoicing. Soon there would be full membership of the Commonwealth of Nations under Her Majesty the Queen. Lugard Hall next day, Sunday, the crowds assembled to watch the ministers and members of the legislature arrive for the ceremonies in the House of Assembly. Then the Premier arrived, al Haji Sir Amadou Bello, leader of the Northern People's Congress, the majority party in the House. the governor, Sir Gawin Bell, KCMG, CBE. He was greeted by the Sudan. The governor and the premier were to address the large crowd from the balcony of Lugard Hall. The Gawin spoke first. In accordance with the agreement, reached with Her Majesty's government last October that the northern region should achieve self-government on March the 15th of this year. I have handed over as part of that agreement the presidency of Executive Council to al Haji Sir Ahmadou Bello, Premier of the northern region. In the speech from the throne at the opening of the budget session last month, I said that we were profoundly thankful that we had reached this stage in the constitutional development of the region in peace and friendship. I would like to repeat that now. We thank God that it is through agreement and by trust and mutual respect that we have come to this present happy conclusion. Many 
have contributed during the past 56 years to all that we now see before us. A measure of prosperity, peace, and determination to go forward into the future with courage and confidence in God's guidance. I would like first to remember the pioneers from Lord Lugard onwards who laid the foundations. And then those who have since been instrumental in building up the structure of what has now become a great self-governing region. In doing so, I would like to pay tribute to the civil servants of all branches of government, to the native authorities and their staffs, and to the politicians, whether they be supporters of the government or members of the opposition. All have helped to create this body politic. Remember that without God's help, nothing can be achieved. And may this region go forward in the inspiration of its motto, work and worship. The Premier replied. In the name of God, the compassionate and the merciful, let thanks be given to God everywhere in the northern region of Nigeria for the blessing of self-government which we have received this day through his help and for the blessing of progress which has long been a feature of our lives within this region. In our prayers, let us also beseech Almighty God for continued and peaceful progress and for the furtherance of the prosperity and happiness of the people of this land. As I speak to you on this historic day, I am beset by many emotions. The emotion of gratitude. Gratitude to Almighty God that I have been spared to be of service to my people and to lead them towards this great event in our history. The emotion of humility. Humbly conscious of my own limitations and of the pressing need for every one of us to give of his best now and in the future, even more than we have done in the past. The emotion of pride. Proud that I and my colleagues have succeeded in the face of many difficulties in the aim of acquiring self-government as soon as it was practicable. And finally, the emotion of joy. Greatly rejoicing that I can share with all of you this day an immense feeling of relief and contentment at the successful outcome of our advance towards the creation of a self-governing northern region of Nigeria. But it remains for me to express our keen anticipation on May the 15th when we shall officially celebrate this day. We shall then welcome and be honored by the presence of their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. We shall also welcome many high dignitaries both from the United Kingdom and from other countries. Sharing in our celebrations, there would be present, in addition, many of the distinguished government officers who have served us long and so well in the past. On May the 15th, we shall not forget our young men and women in training overseas. Although they will not be with us, we shall most certainly be thinking of them. For on them, in years to come, will we rely for the successful attainment of our next objective. That objective I can see clearly before me now. It is to secure and improve the health, prosperity, and happiness of all our people without discrimination on grounds of tribe or creed. And finally, to establish our country in a position where it will be a model of progress, goodwill, toleration and freedom, not only to Africa, but to the whole world. May God grant that his blessing shall always be with us in our endeavors. <laughs>